Hello everyone, I am Dr. Naveen Borwal, Educator at an Academy and today in the short span of time we are going to discuss a lot of things. So, we will discuss Little Syndrome in very short span of time and along with Little Syndrome what is the difference between Little Syndrome and Cohen Syndrome. And for proper understanding of Little Syndrome, we should know the basic physiology of collecting duct or you can say late distal convoluted tubule and also what is functioning of endosperm. If only we know the all the structure of collecting duct, late distal connected tubule and how aldosterone is going to act upon it, then only we can understand the clinical part of that. So first of all, let me tell you that there are two sides. Side on the lumen is called as luminal side or apical side. So whenever I say luminal side or apical side, it means this is the side. And whenever I say basolateral, this is called as basolateral side of the cell. This is the big principal cell. Okay. This is the big principal cell. This is the lumen and this is the big principal cell or T cell. There are two cells mainly in the collecting duct. One is called as principal cell, other is called as intercollected cell. Principal cell has set of action for two hormones. One is called as ADH and other is called as aldosterone. Here I will focus on aldosterone. So before going to aldosterone, let me discuss what are the basic structure. So you can see there is a primary active transporter called as sodium potassium pump on the basolateral side of the collecting duct. And acoporin 3 and 4 is the water transporter. Acoporin 3 and 4, they are always present on the basolateral membrane. Remember, they are always present. Like in PCT, it is acoporin 1. Here, it is acoporin 3 and 4, they are always present. But Acoporin 2 is not present always. It is present only in the presence of ADH. So only when ADH comes, okay, it acts on serpentine receptor, it increases cyclic AMP, it causes phosphorylation of protein kinase A, and then it causes implantation of acoporin 2 on the lumen. So on the lumen it can be implanted. So water can be now absorbed. This is about ADH now. Other thing. Then there is one more channel for sodium. And that is very important channel and that is called as ENAC. What is ENAC? ENAC is epithelial sodium channel. ENAC is epithelial sodium channel and this work under the influence of endosterone. And this is ROMK, renal outer medullary potassium. This is one of the most important potassium channel present on the apical or you can say luminal site. Okay, so this is the basic structure of you can say late digital convoluted tubule or collecting duct. Only now we can go in more detail of aldosterone. So as you know, there are mainly two mineralocorticoid. There are mainly two mineralocorticoid. One is aldosterone and other is deoxycorticosterone. Those are both acting as a mineralocorticoid. I will talk about aldosterone. So what is function of this aldosterone? It inhibit degradation of ENAC. So normally ENAC which causes reabsorption of sodium is degraded by NADD 4 by 2. So net 4 2 is going to degrade ENAC. And I told you in this, the main channel from where sodium is coming is what? ENAC. The main channel from where sodium is coming is ENAC, epithelial sodium channel. And if it is degraded, sodium cannot be absorbed. So what is action of this mineralocorticoid or you can say endosterone? Action is to inhibit the degradation of ENAC by NADD. So this is working through which mechanism, through which kinase? It is very important and in Harrison has mentioned it is serum glucocorticoid regulated kinase or simply you can say SGK. Simply you can say SGK. And as you know, destroys the two type of action. One is called as genomic action and other is called as non-genomic action. Okay, so genomic action here will be that it will work on SGK and the main thing is there to prevent degradation of ENAC. So functioning of ENAC will be improved more. So functioning of ENAC will be more improved. You can see here the functioning of ENAC can be improved more. So more sodium can be reabsorbed in this process and more potassium can be secreted by ROMK. So main functioning of aldosterone is one is to reabsorb sodium through ENAC. Why? So that it causes degradation, it prevents degradation of ENAC 
through SGK, serum and glucocorticoid regulated kinase. It is clearly mentioned. This is genomic action. This is the more non-genomic action. See, steroids have non-genomic action. They work as if they are acting as a protein. They have a receptor on the cell membrane. So non-genomic action are very fast. And genomic action are very quite slow. But it is very, I mean, uh, it's very burden topic. And non-genomic action is to increase the activity of sodium potassium exchanger. So there are so many action of aldosterone, and it can be more understood by this diagram. So normally, as we know, we have studied in the steroid, the house steroid action. So normally, mineralocorticoid receptors are attached by heat shock protein. So one thing should be clear. Why normally mineralocorticoid actions are not working? Because when there is no aldosterone, when there is no mineralocorticoid, these mineralocorticoid receptors are attached by heat shock protein. But this is only when there is no aldosterone. So what will happen if aldosterone comes? What will happen if aldosterone comes? You can see in this diagram, aldosterone is coming and it is attaching to mineralocorticoid receptor and it will leave behind heat shock protein or chaperone protein. So it should be very much clear that until mineralocorticoid receptor is not having aldosterone, it is bounded with heat shock protein or chaperone protein or chaperone protein. So they prevent they prevent activation of mineralocorticoid receptor. But when aldosterone, when aldosterone comes, what happened there? It will bound to mineralocorticoid receptor and they will form homodimer. Now those going to nucleus, they form heterodimer as you know, in contrast to thyroid, vitamin A, D, all those PPA, alpha and gamma, those are nuclear receptor and they form heterodimer. But this is aldosterone, having receptor in cytoplasm, so they can form homodimer. And after that, they will move to the nucleus. They will move inside the nucleus and they will do genomic action. They will do genomic action and they will prevent, they will prevent degradation of ENAD by NED4. You can see in this diagram, this will prevent degradation of ENAD by NEDD4. By what? By which kinase? By SGK kinase. Serum and glucocorticoid kinase. So this must be remembered that aldosterone is working via SGK and this is serum and glucocorticoid regulated kinase. So NED is degrading it but this is preventing it. I hope this is clear. Now one thing more I want to highlight over there that you know that mineralocorticoid receptor also have affinity for glucocorticoid and they are more in number. They are more in number. So why don't glucocorticoid bind with mineralocorticoid receptor and activate them? What is the reason behind that? Yes, it is written over there that mineralocorticoid receptors also have high affinity for glucocorticoid, but kidney has an enzyme 11 beta hydroxy dehydrogenase type 2. This you have to remember. This is very important. Although glucocorticoids are having high affinity and they are more in number. So why they are not going to activate mineralocorticoid receptor in the kidney? Because your kidney has an enzyme 11 beta hydroxy dehydrogenase type 2 and they will convert cortisol into cortisone and corticosterone into 11 oxy derivative 2 and they don't bind to mineralocorticoid receptor. They don't bind to mineralocorticoid receptor. Please remember this. So without presence of this enzyme, okay, if this enzyme is not present, then glucocorticoid will attach. So you can see in this beautiful diagram, it is given that even cortisol is present. But why won't it is activating your mineralocorticoid receptor? Answer is that 11 HSD2. What is 11 HSD2? 11 hydroxy dehydrogenase type 2. These all are your MCQ. See, I am trying to save your time, and that is why I am trying to build everything in one topic, and that is little syndrome. So if you know about aldosterone then you can understand reduce syndrome more efficiently. Okay, so this is about how endosterone is going to act. After that, coming to the topic, little syndrome. Little syndrome is autosomal dominant disease and it is happening when there is gain of mutation of ENAC. When there is gain of mutation of ENAC means, means ENAC is working more or less. Of course, ENAC is working more. And if ENAC is working more, due to sodium and water reabsorption due to sodium 
and water reabsorption what do you expect what do you expect due to sodium and water reabsorption there will be hypertension there is going to be hypertension of course when there is more reabsorption of sodium there will be hypertension and when there is more sodium reabsorption ras will be suppressed or ras will be elevated it is very common thing that whenever there is more sodium reabsorption why ras will increase so this will decrease your renin and decrease your aldosterone so these are having similar function as if you are having more aldosterone so these are having similar function as if you are having more aldosterone but aldosterone is low so because aldosterone is low so what sh should you call this you should call this pseudo aldosteronism pseudo aldosteronism why pseudo because although you are having hypertension although you are having more reabsorption of water then too aldosterone is low because this reabsorption of sodium is not because of aldosterone aldosterone is suppressed but because of gain of mutation of enac by which aldosterone function so now when sodium is absorbed more sodium and water are absorbed more is this clear now sodium and water will be absorbed more and of course potassium will be secreted as a function of aldosterone as we have discussed earlier now see that because potassium is secreted what else we will get in this syndrome we will get hypokalemia we will get hypokalemia and you already know the basic physiology when there is hypokalemia potassium will go from cell to outside and proton will come by the pump so if proton is coming inside and potassium is going outside what it will create it will create a metabolic alkalosis that is why when there is hypokalemia there is metabolic alkalosis when there is hyperkalemia there is acidosis because of this pump so now you know there is more absorption of sodium so this can cause hypertension unresponsive to spironolactone so this will cause hypertension which is unresponsive to spironolactone why unresponsive to spironolactone spironolactone as we all know it is aldosterone antagonist so aldosterone is already low so why you are going to antagonize uh, aldosterone so spironolactone cannot suppress hypertension in little syndrome but it is sensitive to which drug amyloride but it is sensitive to drug amyloride because amyloride act on enac channel and as you know there is gain of mutation of enac so of course if you block enac that will be responsive so in little syndrome they are responsive to amyloride not to spironolactone second we have discussed it has low renin why low renin negative feedback mechanism there is low aldosterone and there will be hypokalemia metabolic alkalosis so these are feature of little syndrome and because little syndrome is not having more aldosterone that is why we have named it as pseudo hyperaldosteronism so little syndrome should be called as pseudo hyperaldosteronism now one thing i want to ask you more do you know anything as pseudo hypoaldosteronism this we have talked about pseudo hyper so you should also be very much clear there is one more disease in which there is pseudo hypoaldosteronism and that is called as gordon syndrome and it is also autosomal dominant like little syndrome okay now we have we have differentiated pseudo hypoaldosteronism from actually primary hyperaldosteronism and that is called as cone syndrome So Cohn syndrome, of course, you know that when there is Cohn syndrome, there will be more hyperaldosterone, aldosterone will be more, and there will be hypertension, and that will be responsible for spinal lactone. But one thing I want to discuss over here is aldosterone scale. If you read physiology, we will read what is aldosterone scale. There is more and more sodium absorption. There is more and more water. Why there is no edema in Cohn syndrome? Why your body is escaping the effect of aldosterone because of release of A and P. What is A and P? A and P is atrial natriuretic polypeptide. They are A and P, B and P, urodilatin. All these are causing release of more sodium from the kidney, more water from the kidney. If you remember the Bain Bridge reflex also, when there is more fluid in your right atrium, low pressure baroreceptors are activated, and they cause tachycardia. They decrease ADH and they increase A and P. So it is almost similar to that process. that when there is more fluid your body will secrete atrial natriuretic polypeptide and it will compensate the edema 
so there will be no alkaline there. So this is called as aldosterone escape. So in Cohen syndrome, we will get aldosterone escape. I hope you like this video. If you like this, please like this, comment, thanks, and subscribe to Academy.